Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Demonologist UK podcast and what a show have I got lined up for you this week. What's up Demos? I can't... It's another week, we got to the end of another week, I call that an absolute achievement in my book, <laughs> achievement in my book. Now before we get started, this week we've got Jane Rowley on, I'm going to be talking about something that we spoke about when I had her and Neil on, um, it's sort of connecting with extraterrestrials, um, sort of non-earthbound spirits. We're going to be talking about that. Um, I want to say a massive, massive shout out uh, to everybody that's um, who's been supporting me. I'm, I'm actually, I'm really, really surprised the amount of um, people that have subscribed to my channel. Um, I cannot literally believe how amazing it's kicked off this week um everyone's been on the youtube everyone's been going crazy i mean all the presenters on this one don't forget we're live now on the new home of the demonologist uk which is the haprc live feeds um and i'm settling in quite good i'm settling in quite good you uh, don't know if anyone caught the um the loonies last saturday is a bit of a mad one lots and lots of squirty cream and harry potter questions it was a uh, it was crazy but yeah it was, it was a good it was a good little uh it was nice to sort of not talk about the paranormal for a little while but yeah let's get down to business now as you know i have now been raising money for two weeks for the national autistic society and so far i've not been very successful so Everybody that's watching the stream tonight, please, please head over to the Demonologist UK Facebook page. Even if you can only donate 25p, it's all going to an absolutely brilliant cause. It really is. There are so many. Autism has become the norm now but it's not normal for the people that have autism you don't realize the struggles that these people go through and especially children this is why i'm raising money i'm raising money for children with autism during this lockdown and after this lockdown to support them to make sure that they they get what they need in life they get to where they need to be in life it's all about supporting these people so head over to facebook.com forward slash the demonologist uk you can find my gofundme over there Donate what you can. I know times are hard because of this COVID, but just a little donation goes a long, long way. Um, what else have we got to speak about? Don't forget to check out my podcast um, over there. I've done a guest slot on the UK Ghost Stories with Rob um, over there. That one's that one's racking up the numbers at the moment. And don't forget to check out all the new presenters that are coming on the haprc live feeds um off the top of my head at the moment you've got sam per um wendy uh, linda you've got jane's bringing up some who we've got on tonight's got some wicked shows we're going to be talking to her about that very soon but yeah guys like things are going well at the moment head over to my youtube page all you got to do click on the search bar type um you got to type uh, the Demonologist UK. Sorry, been a long day. <laughs> Just type the Demonologist UK. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And also leave a review on the Facebook page. Yeah? For all you fans out there, for all my demos, and yes, I have nicknamed my listeners all the demos, head over to facebook.com forward slash the Demonologist UK. Set me a review. Ask me questions. I'm there for you guys. I'm there for you guys. At to, uh, Everybody, we're going to be having a roll call very soon. But first, I want to get Jane on the show. Hi, Jane. How are you doing? Hi. Yeah, very good. Yeah, not bad. Have you recovered you? from the Loonies show on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, the Loonies is such a breath of fresh air because when we've sort of been doing, you know, we, like you like you just said, it's just not paranormal. It's the only show probably in all the HAPRC live feeds that is not a paranormal show. And we yeah. don't have guests. We don't. But it's just an opportunity for all the presenters to get together and just have a laugh, take the mickey out of each other, bit of squirty cream. Just and it's just a real. <laughs> Whoever's just staying in touch, really, while lockdown's on, and it's yeah. just a real good laugh. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think it's great because people actually get to see the presenters in a way where 
we're not being serious, I suppose. Yeah, and it, it's, it's just good fun. It's nice. It's nice to have that sort of, and to see our sort. It's our personality coming across because as much as they can see it on the on the live shows that we do here on on the live feeds, but it's nice for them to see us in a more sort of relaxed environment. Yeah, and if there's one thing you've got to have in the paranormal, that's a good sense of humour. Oh, one hundred. And if you can share that with some nutty mates, then it's a good laugh. <laughs> nutty is <laughs> definitely the word I would use to describe <laughs> that. <laughs> Out to Jacqueline saying, uh, "Hope you have your squirty cream. I'm nearly eight on mine." Joe, you know what? I still haven't bought none. Still haven't bought none. <laughs> still time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just talking about the the HAPRC uh, live feeds that we got going on now. Some amazing presenters coming through, and um, we all stuck up on the presenter chat the other day. All the different shows that we've got planned coming up. I mean, you got loads waiting in the wings, didn't you? Yeah, well, I was doing shows sort of before um, before lockdown, before I was sort of diagnosed and I was poorly. Uh, mm. I was doing quite a few shows then, so I did knock them on the head, all the, my personal shows, but I still continued to do the shows with Neil, the yeah. um, the Haunted Connections show. So I still continued to do those, uh, obviously, when I was well enough. So, that's, uh, so we kept those going. But, yeah, I am bringing some of the old ones back, so... Um, bring him back uh, behind the storybook, which I did re used to really enjoy because it was it's looking at sort of our well-known fairy tale stories and looking at the origins and um, uh, the truths behind some of the myths and legends that we sort of used to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, see you put up some of the shows that you uh, you've got planned, and I'm I'm really excited. I'm going to put a couple of them in my because I do. Um... I do like a monthly newsletter that people sort of sign up with. If you want to get involved in that, all you've got to do is email me or contact me on Facebook. I do like this monthly newsletter. And in that, I sort of put the shows that I'm going to be watching over the next month, um, the books that I'm reading, the posts that I'm interested in. And, I mean, there's a couple of shows that I'm, that I'm going to stick of yours on there because, I mean, when you was writing them up the other day, I was just like, yeah, no, I fancy watching that one. So <laughs> it's going to, I'm looking forward to them. I am. So. H-A-P-R-C, the Haunt Hinkley um, Paranormal Research Centre. Now, last time he was on the show, we was talking about um, something that happened um, with an extraterrestrial. Now, tonight's show, I want to sort of, I want to go beyond the paranormal almost, and I want to talk about contacting spirits that are not of human form. So, like you said, you had that on the last show, but um, we'll get to that. But what I want you to do is explain to the listeners out there what exactly happened and so they can get the idea of it. So the first encounter that we had um, was with, well, we were actually, Neil and myself were actually doing a live feed and it was at Christmas time. So the Christmas tree was on a small table under the under the window mm. and there was a REM pod going off um, during our live feed and um, somebody actually took a picture of um i think as we panned around the camera i think it was taken from a still from the live feed but as we panned the camera around and back again i mean we didn't notice it at the time but then somebody asked about the rem pod so we showed them sort of where the rem pod was and it was at that time then i noticed that in the empty glass cabinet next to where this little table was there was like a, a reflection of a, a little figure and he's yeah. only about um I'd sort of say he was less than probably about three feet tall, probably slightly less than that because he was just smaller than the table. He was just yeah. a bit shorter than the table. And we've got that reflection in there. Um, and the picture can be seen uh, on, um, I think it is on the evidence page somewhere. Um, it is. But I can, I'm, I'm I can gonna, share. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to post it up after the show on the Demonologist Facebook page for people to actually sort of, so then they can see what we're talking about. Because for some reason, I mean, I've had murders this week. The, the the Mac blew up, and I'm on the laptop, so it doesn't do the thing. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I am going to post it up. But yeah, I mean, it's, well, I did I did actually do a draw from the from the actual picture. I did do yeah. a drawing from it, so I have actually got. Oh, almost looks like yeah. lamb, doesn't it? It so, almost looks like lamb, Alistair Crowley's it's little... Like um, holding a computer or some sort of device. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, it's hard to get your head around, obviously, 
I mean, from a from an investigator's perspective, when you first start investigating, it's hard to get your head around, especially when you've got a medium there, that they're communicating with something that you can't see. And then when someone drops this bombshell, it's like, oh, I've spoken to an extraterrestrial. It's almost like, mind blown. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's gone beyond. But, I mean, talk us through that experience. Is that the first time you've, you've spoken to an extraterrestrial? That was, the, that was the first time we sort of identified he was there. Um, yeah. Another time we are sort of engaged in some conversation with him and he's not friendly or sorry he's not um nasty or aggressive or anything else like that he's yeah. just he's just here and there doesn't seem to be any of the others around in this you know around him when i say any of this there doesn't seem to be any other um uh of his kind right um, around in the center or anything the only seems to be him um He's he's just he's just I think he's a fairly young um a fairly young I don't I I just call him little E T. <laughs> yeah. Amy's uh, uh Amy's little little we affectionately call him Dave the Alien. Yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah I, I don't know who calls him Dave. I've never called him Dave, but I think somebody's <laughs> given him a nickname to Dave. <laughs> so, if you look at the concept of, of of spirits and and connecting with spirits, you're obviously connecting with souls that are deceased. Now, when we get into the realms of contacting non-human entities, you know, like I, was, I, I deal with demons and, and and the demon side of things. Um, people do with angels and the angel side of things. They're non-human entities. When we get into the realm of ETs, do you think it's possible? Do you think you're talking to um? A, a deceased ET? Maybe it's the soul of the ET, or do you reckon it's actual? an extraterrestrial I that you're talking feel, to i don't feel that he's deceased right. i just feel he's in a, a, if you like a, a dimension that's sort of running with ours and i've been fortunate enough to seem to be able to to to, to interact with these or to see them um right. the more the more and more that we get up at the center the center just seems to be um like a beacon for all these things because uh you know we've talked about having creatures up there before and there's all sorts of um non-entities up there the creatures and and um things like that non-human things um right. you know we even we we even touch on the on the on the fae on on other um spiritual um uh all sorts really the creatures are, are one were the first things that we started with but right. after we'd after we'd sort of had contact with this little ET, there was three of us in the seance room doing um, just doing a seance really. But we never brought anything human through again. That the, what we got was like a collective um, being. I say collective being because there was about um, ten or twelve souls into this thing, and this was this was non this was. This was not of this world again, and it was almost like a travelling sort of uh, thing, really. Um, okay. You know, I sort of tried to draw it again there. Um, there was sort of just this big, it's sort of like a bit of a big sort of cloud, really. But okay. there was like 12 to 14 sort of different souls in this thing. It was like a collective consciousness. Okay. But it filled the room. There was nothing else there. And um, one of the other lads, he sort of picked up on it. He was sort of like they got this. He was sort of got this confusion with all these different things. But once I co sort of connected with it and I could see it, um, yeah. I, and when I described it to him, he, he said, "Yeah, that's 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 sort of what it is." But he he, he couldn't sort of quite um, put it into words as such. Yeah. So that was our second sort of experience of having something that was not not of this world a sort of traveling sort of collective consciousness right no i mean it brings me on to my next question and because you said it's like a collective consciousness because i was going to ask you do you think that this we're, we're going to call or well, we'll say et do you think this extraterrestrial is astral projecting itself somehow um because you know when we talk about aliens we talk about you know there, for them to get because we see ufos all the time for them to get to earth they've got to have a, 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 a like superior intellect do you mean do you think like maybe this uh, et is astral projecting itself to the center or do you think it's a natural embodiment no, I of think him i think his energy is actually there because we're talking about energies aren't we so yeah. his energy 
is actually there. The, the fact that we, we sort of caught him by chance in with this reflection um, yeah. was, was just a bonus, really. But his energy is actually there. And I just I, I feel that he is 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 there. Um, but we just have to be able to, I think, we just have to be fortunate enough that when he's sort of there and we can connect with him, that's when we can communicate with him. And I just mm. think sometimes that people get so blinkered that they sometimes think that par the paranormal is only human spirits. And, yeah. and since we've been working in the centre, it is so much more than that. Yeah, there's definitely. like I say with so many different things and I just think we are still scratching at the surface there's so many things that we don't know and by learning about all these different things I think it opens us up to just just discovering more and more and more and and mm. even when I see things like this when I went into the mirror into that vast sort of void of space where things were traveling around to yeah. me, it all sort of fits in, and I, I can I can just sort of see how it all works. But trying to explain it to other people is sometimes a bit more difficult because you've got to ask them to sort of be that little bit more open minded, and it's not just about human dead souls. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I I I completely agree. Um, when you sort of take somebody who has never experienced anything paranormal and you take them out on investigation, you all, you, you automatically are asking them to believe something that they've been taught not to believe over many, many years. It, we, it's embedded in us from when we're younger, you know. Um, we talk about skeletons in the closet, ghosts in the closet, ghosts under the bed, vampires, zombies. You know, you're told, you, you, even though you see them on telly, you're taught not to believe them. So when you take people out on investigation, you're almost asking them to open their mind. And then when you try and explain to them, there's a little bit more than just spirits and ghosts. You know, like you said, there's Fae, there's ETs. We're talking about cryptoids. You know, these all come under the paranormal blanket. And these people have to expand their mind a lot more. And it does confuse a lot of people. And this is another reason why I wanted to do this show, because I wanted to, to, to show people that you have to expand your mind. Even some of the stuff that I deal with, the demons that I deal with, these, these demons, like... They predate religion itself, even though demons in themselves, people say they're a religious problem, you know, they, they're also religion. They predate it. And this is what I'm saying when it comes to this ET. This is what fascinated me about it, because it is that extra step of the paranormal. You yeah. see, it's taking the paranormal to that level where you're now in contact with a, an, 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 well, an alpha, an alpha, an alien life form, you know, <laughs> you talk about that, the little thing eating pizza from when I was younger, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, that, but, but moving on to the next one that we uh, sort of encountered, and this was in October 2019, there was a, a plate that came to the centre right. and this plate um, we did a live feed on it, and so many people said that they were feeling sick from just looking at it. And right. we, um, I mean, I've, I've got a full transcript of the of the sort of the live feed that we did, because mm -hmm. it just it, it was it was one of those things where you just had to sort of try and read it over and over and over again to try and to try and let it sink in. And this right. was a, an astral traveller. This was an astral energy that was travelling, right. and. Um, that that was again was another sort of um mind blowing sort of experience really because it wasn't yeah. what we expected. Mm. I mean, when we talk about astral traveling, uh, for people that have, have started with saying that they have to open their mind up a little bit more, this is almost like projecting the mindset, projecting the soul, isn't it? It's almost the one like um, projecting your energy elsewhere. No, with with him. I, his energy was actually when i say astral traveler he was yeah. sort of traveling the astral sort of planes if you like and he was he he wasn't projecting the image he was actually traveling traveling um that was that was his energy that was that was traveling he wasn't projecting it but he was sort of traveling um just just through the earth time space and all it, it was just um yeah, it was a completely different energy from what we we'd, we'd encountered before. Yeah, so you were you're talking about like obviously teleportation, quantum travel, you know, black holes, yeah. um, traveling through dimensions almost. Yes. 
So, yeah, talk about this play. What happened with this play? Like you said, you've got a transcript there. So, because I've never heard this story, it'd be great to hear what actually happened with this play because everyone's popping up on the chat the saying, plate. I hate that play. <laughs> 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 the plate is still up at the center. I think it's I think it's on the wall. But because he was um because he was really quite intelligent, um, we kept him near the computer, near where the, 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 the hub and the computer and everything was, and he seemed quite happy there, but he didn't right. really want to um be involved with people. He just wanted to sort of try and learn about the technology. So we kept him on the wall near the computer. I'm not quite sure where he is now. If Neil's watching, he could probably <laughs> stay because I'm not quite sure where he is um, <laughs> in the centre. So just to ask, Jane, for everybody out there, um, so do you have to be media mystical to speak to these sort of these ET uh, or these astral movers? Or, yes. you know, you, so you have yeah. to be media mystical to talk to them. Yes, because what I do when 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 I've sort of opened up, I can send my energy out, and yeah. I connect with their energy. Once I've connected with their energy, I can then see them, hear them, okay. you know, talk to them, um, and that's where my drawings then come from. And this is where I, when I very first started working with, um, up at the centre with Neil, because I could see all these things and. What I wanted the team to do is try and see what I could see. So then I started drawing things. And as time's gone on, I've got sort of a book full of things that really that we've seen up at the centre and seen up at other places. So it is it is a case of really clearing your mind, being able to have that very clear mindset because you don't, you don't need anything coming in, anything going out. You only need to have that empty mind to allow that energy to come in and, and sort of give you, give you um, that you know being able to portray those um images and and things for you yeah no i mean i completely understand i mean it, it sort of we talk about stereotypes a lot and when you think of aliens you think of extrasensory perception how they communicate with each other and like you're explaining now you communicate with these aliens these astral movers these astral beings through extrasensory perception so it's almost as if like the stereotypes that people think of it's living up to that right now yeah, I, I I do, I do feel it does take a lot of hard work though, because I've I have been doing this you know quite a long time, training as medium, you know, sitting in circle and that sort of thing. It's not the sort of thing that I don't think that you'd be able to just do in, in you know, even in perhaps a couple of months. I yeah. mean, it's only opened up to me after quite a few years, but the more I do, the more that opens up to me, and it's mm. almost like you know, and. Uh, you know, I, when I connect with them, I can almost feel them sort of scanning me as in, you know, are you a good person? Can I trust you? You know, what's what what sort of a heart do you have? You know, are you are you going to be deceitful? Are you going to be? Mm. You know, it, and it's you can almost feel them scanning you as before they communicate in order to see if they can trust you or not. Yeah, no, I mean, I can. it's almost like telepathy, isn't it? We're talking about telepathy, being able to read people's thoughts and their feelings. Um, so, yeah, like, I mean, when you look at the, I'm not, I'm going to go completely off key here, but when you look at the film Independence Day, they were able, the, the aliens in there were able to feel thoughts and feelings before the person did. So, it's, I mean, you're almost talking about telepathy. And that would sort of go along the lines of these things having superior intelligence as well. Um it is, it is see for me even for me I, when it comes to aliens I, I my mind's not even <laughs> even there yet when it comes to aliens but like hearing stuff like this it blows my mind i mean i i, I was a medium i trained as a medium for in mean, two or three years had a bad experience and decided to sort of come away from it so when you say you have to train it's they say that you're it's, i think it's you use a third eye don't you and it's sort they people could describe it as a muscle the more you use it the, the stronger it gets so like you say if you're training that third eye over a period of time you're obviously going to surpass the level of contacting spirits and ghosts you're going to start experience like you said Faye, the aliens the 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 astral movers i mean are those the only things that you've encountered that, that at the center that's beyond spirits and ghosts no we've got the creatures all the creatures as well the spiritual creatures um there's um well, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we've got. <laughs> well while you have a thing, I think it's a good time for us to do a little part of the show that I do. I, I call the roll call. 
<laughs> now the roll calls everybody that's in the chat i'll just give them a little shout out because it's great to have that support out there and you know what the one thing i can say about this show is i have dedicated listeners that are always here so i mean first massive shout goes out to ben who can't actually be here because he's been banned from facebook once again so out to you mrs louisa welcome along out to the boss man out to the uh the pack man mr neil packer Massive shouts going out to Russell Old and all the Essex Ghost Hunters guys. Don't forget they're going to be on the show very soon. Out to Patrick, out to Jamie, out to Amy. Massive, massive shouts going out to Anne. Anne was the guy that was doing the Harry Potter thing the other day, wasn't he? He kept telling me that I was wrong. Yeah, well, our question master. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. There was there was definitely some hazing going on there, I'm telling you. <laughs> out to Jacqueline, out to Karen. Oh, my God, it's crazy tonight. Yeah, out to everybody that's locked in. I mean, it, I think I think it's one of them subjects that sort of pique your interest. Because when you talk about Faye now, I'm probably going to get this completely wrong. But when you talk about Faye, we're talking about fairy tale creatures. We're talking about we're not talking about cryptoids, though, are we? Um, you see, I I don't like to define anything in one box. I don't like to put a label on it, sort of. And I know what else, sort of what you're saying about cryptoids, but who's to say? And I know this was um, I know this was mentioned the other day. You know, could could say Bigfoot be a yeah. big sort of creature that perhaps is is in that thing? Um, mm. uh, when we were speaking to Kate Ray the other day, I mean, this was I think a theory that she mentioned that. Um, cryptoids could possibly be part of the fey realm um yeah. I mean, i've got my own analogy on bigfoot i believe that he's a descendant of nephilim that is my belief but that sort of goes along with what i study do you know what yeah. i mean <laughs> but yeah. um yeah no i mean when you talk about fey and cryptoids they they're oh, you're always talking about the same thing like you said you don't like to label these things i mean it's, how can well, big I've, I've had three, three experiences with the face since Christmas um, right. and I've, I've had several experiences with the Faye before that so the more now I've been working with them the more and more I see them even now just going in t for a walk because I go because yeah. I have to go for a walk every day and I do go down sort of a little bit a bit of a woodland path and and sometimes they're there straight away yeah. Sometimes if it's a bit of a quieter day, and I say quieter in their in their realm, um, but um, around Imolk when um, uh, first February, yeah, uh, they they were celebrating the same, you know, that that sort of mid um, that time that fe that festival, the same as all the others, and yeah. uh, the excitement was just unbelievable down that path. The energy was 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 great. I mean, define Faye for us because I've just had someone pop up on my phone who's texted me and said he's asked me what Faye is. So define Faye for the people out there that don't know what we're talking about. So for me, um, the Faye are sort of um, sort of fairies, um, gnomes, you, you, you sort of your woodland spirits, um, yeah. your things like Pan, um, all sort of come into that realm. So almost like the cast Goblin of the spider wick your... chronicles. Sorry. <laughs> almost like the the cast of the spider wick chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't like to sort of say, well, that's where that ends and that's yeah. where that starts, because to me, the Fae will sort of um, you know, some of their creatures could even go into um some of our spiritual creatures that we've got up at the center or you know elementals and there's there's lots of things i don't necessarily like to put everything in a in a box you know it's it's yeah. people seem to be quite obsessed with well it's got to be in that box so it can't be that and, mm. and well why not it could perhaps go across both those boxes definitely definitely and i think if you start labeling things that's when you understand you it less. yeah yeah you restrict your intelligence you restrict your knowledge for instance like you just described elementals there i mean elementals can be seen as fey they can be seen as demons they can be seen as, as spirits so that have control of the elements themselves i mean they could at the end of the day it all comes under the paranormal blanket yeah, so at the end of the day, this is what we're all here to study. As much as I focus on demons and the negative side, uh, you focus on the fae and the more of the positive side from what I've, I've gathered over the time, because we've been 
we've been talking like for ages on the I want to present a chat and that. Um, it's it's just one of them things that I think like you see you hit the nail on the head. Everyone has to have a label nowadays. Everyone has to be assigned to something. And I think what people don't understand is is paranormal is the paranormal. You can't put a label on everything. No. And people try to, and that's where things, that's where people then restrict themselves. Mm. You know, I, I mean, I do, I mean, you say that I, 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 I will work in the positive and in the negative. You know, the, yeah. there can be a lot of fay that can be really, really negative. Mm -hmm. And um, even in, um, you, you know, they're, they're not just small little sort of little cheruby type things with little acorn hats and things. Some of them are really <laughs> quite big. Some of them can be as big as, as, as um, you know, quite big bushes and things like that. I've seen some that are really quite big. Mm. Um, so, you know, it, it's not it's not all sweetness and light with the fae. No, even, no. We, you talk about ants as well, got, don't you? You talk about, like, we, when we talk about fae, people talk about ants or the entish kind, which are like, um, they were depicted in Lord of the Rings as the giant, yeah. um, the giant trees. I mean, yeah. If you look at trees themselves, they are living. They're living creatures. So why can they not be alive like us? You know, if you're talking about speaking to spirits and ghosts and stuff like that. I mean, it, it sort of makes sense, you know. Yeah. And they're in one, of, in one of my books, the Exorcist Sam book. He, you know, in there they talk about um, sort of fairies and, and fae and stuff and how they can uh, impose on people. So. Mm. Uh, yeah, they're not just all sweetness and light. Yeah, and, and I mean, I completely agree. But moving back to this, the, the, the ET, because we sort of come off subject there. We went on over to the <laughs> we started talking about two fairies and <laughs> joking. And the Easter Bunny, don't forget him. <laughs> oh yeah, the guy that runs around with a handgun and a pack of eggs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when we talk about this ET, I mean, I want to talk about connecting with this extraterrestrial now my mind i don't know where to go with this because i've never experienced it myself now like you said when you connected with this extraterrestrial it was almost like it was scanning your emotions and your feelings and, and your heart to see if you're a good person i mean do you think that these extra extraterrestrials have that superior intelligence to be able to communicate with us in that way i think so i think i think they are um you know, because we're not nice, we're not nice creatures, are we? No. You know, no. particularly we are not the human, the average human person is generally a good guy. But yeah. the human nature can be really quite nasty and horrible. And, you know, they, they probably understand that. And they're not going to trust everybody. No, they're not. I do, you know, they're, they're, I'm sure they will know about our history and about people and, and our, um, you know, our, our ancestors and everything else like that they, they're going to know what's all gone on and they're mm. not going to really trust um everybody because by nature we are quite pretty horrible creatures really yeah 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 we have a, a very bad nature side i mean i've always described humans as like we, if you look at us we're like bacteria we move into a certain host we use up all the natural resources and then we move on somewhere else. We're very, like human nature is very bacterial. It's almost as if like, you know, was it law of the jungle? Strongest one wins sort of thing, you know? And like you said, it ain't going to trust every single person it come across. So they are going to telepathically. And as much as I sit here and I'm struggling to believe of contact with ETs, it sort of makes sense in my mind, because like I said before, like we've had, sightings over years and years of unidentified flying objects there's depictions in e egyptian hieroglyphics of ufos there's depictions in, in ancient babylon and sumeria of ufos so they've been around for a very very long time so like you said they will know our history yeah yeah so i i mean i mean i know a little while ago you said about yeah you were you were reading the book of enoch oh, yeah. um <laughs> and that yeah. that is certainly one to get your teeth into but oh. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, all this stuff about angels and demons and and all the fire and all that sort of stuff you know yeah. it, it the more you read the more it makes you actually sort of think you know are these are these the aliens that came down you know angels coming down from the heavens yeah in babylonian times they thought the angels were the stars um mm. so they 
you know, when they were saying about hundreds of thousands of angels and things, you know, they could have been um, interpreted as the stars. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to read you this bit about Noah, because oh, on, this is one of the things that I think is really quite interesting, because we okay. know Adam, when God made Adam, mm -hmm. he made him from the earth. Yeah, yep. and he, he um, you know, Adam was a pretty normal guy. But yep. this, this is Noah. Okay. So, after some days, my son, Methus Methuselah, took a wife for his, for his son Lamech. And she mm. became pregnant by him and bore him a son. And his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose. And the hair of his head, sorry... And the hair on his head and his long locks were white as wool and his eyes were beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lit up the whole house like the sun and the whole mm -hmm. house was very bright. And upon he rose in the hands of the midwife, opening his mouth and conversed with the Lord of righteousness. And his father, Lamech, was afraid of him and fled and came to his father, Methuselah, and said unto him, I have begotten a strange son, diverse from and unlike man, and resembling the sons of God but of heaven. Well, is that for that? Is that from Enoch? Yeah. Yeah. So I when you started reading yeah. that, I was like, that's jogging a memory. That is. <laughs> yeah. So that's not like a normal person. How no. Adam and, and Eve and all the others are described. That yeah. is something a bit more special, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. And when you read the Book of Enoch, it is, it's a lot of translation. The way that they write is very much, it's, you could write the whole Book of Enoch in bullet points. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's one of the things, you know, you could quite, is, is that, is that one of the first aliens? If he was a son of, if he's like the son of God rather mm. than the son of man, then. Yes. You know, is is this one of the first? It could be. It could be. I mean, it very, it's very much down to your own personal translation. I mean, I was mm. talking to somebody the other day um, who is a Jehovah's Witness, very, very devout Jehovah's Witness. And they were saying, like, you know, the reason why we look the way we look is God created us in his image. I said, no, you haven't read the passage properly. And they was like, what, was, what are you saying? I was like, no, read it. He said, God created us in our image meaning more than one and that's yeah. also you can put that towards what you're saying now you know our could this be an alien race that they've that look like us that they've created man after our image yeah but uh, you know when we talk about how horrible human nature is i do think that we have got that from from god because when you read that, he's actually smiting everybody. He yes. smites this and he smites that and he burns this and he, bur he even burns angels for singing the wrong song. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It, if this would have been a God that actually sat down with the people and said, look, don't do it like that. Right? Try a bit of compromise. Try a bit of patience. Try yeah. a bit of um, negotiation and try working mm -hmm. with each other and love each other and everything else rather than smiting everybody and killing everybody. <laughs> I think he set the wrong example to start with. <laughs> he's almost like, when you look at it in that sense, he's almost like the first ever web designer because when things used to go wrong, he'd delete everything and start all over again. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do think the aliens have been around a long, long time, and I think there's a lot more out there. You know, I'm quite looking forward to getting back up the centre to see if we can get E.T. to get some more of yeah. his mates around so we can actually sit, meet more than one of them. Yeah, I mean, if you look at sort of like ancient scriptures as well, in the sort of in the Gnostics religion, the Anunnaki are described as alien beings. Um, yeah. I've been speaking to somebody on Facebook um, who knows a lot about the Anunnaki, and they were saying to me that the Anunnaki were the first. They were here before humans, and they were an alien race. Yeah, and they, they were the ones yeah. that were supposed to um, Sophia was supposed to be the energy, the matriarchal energy of the universe. And they they sort of um, got rid of her. And uh, then when Enki and Enlil turned up, they um, Enki was, sorry, no, Enlil was supposed to be the master geneticist that changed our chromosomes uh, yes. to make it who we are now. And, yes, um, there was, was five was, original, weren't there? Yeah. 
and mm. Enki was supposed to be the serpent in the Garden yeah. of Eden that um, got um, Eve to uh, to eat from the fruit of not you know with the knowledge. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking of things from a Gnostic's point of view. I mean, the Gnostics they um, actually believe that Sophia and Adam were the first creations. And the um, because Sophia wouldn't serve Adam, she wanted to be that an independent Lilith. woman. That was Lilith, wasn't it? Oh, Lilith, that's it, Lilith. Yeah, Lilith, uh, the first I wife. Lilith and Sophia, they're they're always put in the same sort of context in the same bracket in most of literature that I've read. I've read, yeah. um, and then Lilith wouldn't serve Adam, so Adam cast uh, God cast her out of the Garden of Eden. But then you talk about the Gnostics' way of thinking about things they say that God imprisoned us on this planet and that the serpent that tempted uh, Eve to eat the apple was actually giving her the knowledge to get out of the prison planet. So it's, it's, it, there's so many different ways. <laughs> events, but Joe, you what, one thing, read, read, read. read. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I will say though, and I, I mean, I'm my, the jury's still out for me on aliens. I have, I've got a, a specialist on aliens coming on in a few weeks. Um, who's going to try and change my mind um, but I one thing I will say that always seems to to sort of stick around that in every single civilization that's ever lived on this earth there's always been some depiction or some sort of writing that states that there are extraterrestrial beings not from this earth that were around yeah um, yeah there's, there's just so many books now and so many um, archaeological sites and everything that's that's coming up in the caves in like Peru and stuff they've got cave paintings of aliens um you know the nascar lines they believed were originally sort of like signals to the aliens um to um come and you know sort of land there and yeah. somebody did some experiment that if you took the ends of the um nascar lines and took them all the way around the earth and things like that they actually do have sort of like a meaning yeah, uh, no. The, is it Japanese or the Chinese have just recently done um, more um, scanning out there, and they've like discovered oh, hundreds more of these um, um, glyphs Excellent. on the floor. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, and something like Gabliki Tepe has been sort of around for twelve thousand years, and they think that that was um, that was buried deliberately. Yeah. Probably for the first deluge because all the flood, um, the, the the big deluge that sort of wiped out all the first civilization, which was the flood that sort of Noah was supposed to be in. Um, yeah. You know that that's that's an amazing story. I think I should be covering that one first in my uh, behind the story book, the story of Noah. Yeah, and I mean. Is the story of Noah has a dual purpose as well because if you actually read the book of Enoch, the God created the flood to get rid of the Nephilim as well because they were destroying everything, weren't they? So yeah. it has like, I mean, I, I find a lot of stories that we read now have dual purposes. Like, you know, when we talk about the Anunnaki, they do relate to extraterrestrials. And yeah. you look at all the past civilizations, like you were saying, all, all, the pyramids itself you know the way they're geometrically built like how they do that back in the day there are things that are completely unexplainable and nine times out of ten the first thing you come to is the fact that oh, it's got to be extraterrestrials yeah. you know we've just had the american government i think it was in 2018 in december 2018 that actually released um official documents saying that ufos exist the land at roswell happened and the landing at rendlesham it happened yeah and under the Freedom of Information Act, these documents got leaked, but it's almost like the brain's trained not to believe it. We've <laughs> had so much conditioning over the years. We're not, you've got the American government saying, Oh, yeah, no, it, it's true, it's true, but you're still going, Nah, nah, it can't be. Yeah. But there's, <laughs> uh, there's so many theories out there, isn't there? There's, I mean, it, I recently read up on one theory where apparently Mars was a th thriving planet and uh they they sort of ruined the planet and they put adam and eve actually in a in a ship sent it to earth and it was that ship that was the asteroid that just uh killed off all the dinosaurs their ship landing <laughs> you know so <laughs> crazy <laughs> yeah, but is it yeah <laughs> It's one of the things you don't, you don't know what you don't know what to believe now that, that that is plausible, but so is flat earth. That's plausible. <laughs> <but I> still, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. It, that's what puts me off cruises. 
Yeah. <laughs> Place the ship falls gonna, off. <laughs> yeah, am I going to go off the edge to dump giant waterfall into nowhere? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Ants, hold on, let's see what Ants saying. Ants saying, um, I was coming up Facebook user, um, I believe we are made from the earth, possibly by mistake from passing beings. It's said that all life forms came from a meteor that crashed many millions of years ago. That first microorganism passed the way for all life. So, talking about Darwin's theory, really, the fact of evolution yeah. has taken its toll over the years. This yeah. is what I mean, like we've talked about it, Jane. There are so many explanations to how life began. Mm. But if you, if you look at, um, um, some of the um, information that's out there, we we were actually um, chemically, I say, enhanced DNA wise. Because if you look at chromosome two, that was altered uh, in order to make us who we are, and we yeah. sort of instantly appeared because there's so many mechanisms in our body that just couldn't evolve. You know, our eyes have so, something like forty mechanisms in them, and they they have to they have to work straight away. And things like your blood clotting. That has to work straight away because if you get injured, you can't wait for evolution to, to sort of form your platelets and all that sort of thing. Otherwise, you just bleed to death. So there's so many mechanisms in our body that had to work straight away. And we've been around for about 200,000 years. So yeah. it was it's supposed to be en, uh, Enlil that um, he was the master administrator. And the Sumerian uh, word, I think, is uh, was Satan for... Uh, the administrator and that's where the word satan is supposed to have come from mm. so it's it's um you know because he was supposed to be the the awful one that um uh that didn't like people basically <laughs> <laughs> yeah i heard a theory that the word satan comes from the the word saturn because obviously you have all these people that do saturn worshiping you know um the, the form of Aquarius and how it brings forward the change of man into God. And that's where the word Satan comes from because Aquarius also linked to the planet Saturn and Saturn is linked to Satan because Satan is Lucifer and Lucifer means light bearer. Yeah. <laughs> this is one endless trial of this. Like they have apparently found the garden of Eden um, yeah. in um, up in uh, around that Turkey area. Um around where Gabaliki Tepe is, around that area. Yeah. There is a valley yeah. there that they think is the uh, Garden of Eden. Yeah, I mean, what, what was I reading the other day that blew my mind? I was reading, oh, yeah, there's another Stonehenge in America or something. It's called the um, oh, f the Flagstones, something Flagstones. Ah, oh, do you know what? I was reading it, and I was like, I'm, I'm going to remember this. I'm going to remember this. And then now I've started talking about it. I was just like, no, it's gone. I'm gonna I'm gonna search it. I'm gonna put the um the article up on on the uh, on the demonologist fan page. I'm gonna put it up on there. But I do think that the aliens have been coming to this planet for a long, long time, and it's probably only a matter of time before they come back. You know, our I, our, our time on Earth is so short, isn't it, compared to the history yeah. of, the, of the planet itself? Um, you know, even slowly... the of kings, they were supposed to have lived for thousands of years each one. Yeah. I'm slowly coming round. I mean, my partner has been saying for probably the last three or four years that she believes, obviously, and I've said it before, like that we are being tested on Earth um, and these alien creatures are watching us. If we pass our test, then we get moved on to utopia. Or if not, we stay in purgatory. I'm coming round to that way of thinking. The more and more I talk about aliens, the more and more I see these sort of correspondence between stories the way they sort of all sort of add up i am coming round to it and it's just opening the whole new part of, of of the way that i think about things i mean you speaking to this extraterrestrial at the hinkley paranormal research center um it must have just it must have just blew your mind it must have just opened you up to this whole new level of mediumship and this whole new level of feeling and, and discovery um, well, we keep saying at the centre that, it, you know, we do, we sort of earn earn it, if you like, before we go up to another level. And I think we have been there a while. Um, yeah. But we have these, we have these um, three different sort of experiences um, up at the centre. So I do think there's more there. Um, yeah. You know, I'm hoping that by the time we get back, little E.T. will still be there. Uh, he obviously felt quite comfortable there and he, he, he didn't feel... He was being threatened as long as he was sort of left alone. 
Um, yeah. he, he was he was fine. Um, but even going back to the other one, the astral traveler, you know, when when I connected with him, the first yeah. thing I saw, I, I was in a wood, uh, and I was there was a a large Alsatian uh, barking at me, and um, it was in a small clearing in a wood, and it, it it was raining, and I can clearly see it now. And and that was the image that he gave to me when he first when he first sort of came to the earth. Right. He'd landed in the forest, and this dog oh. was barking at him. And okay, right. It was raining, and um, there was this just sort of ball of transparent energy that was sort of just spinning. Right. So do you think that could be his like his almost his teleportation device, or or do you think that was him showing you symbolically? of the way um, that he got here. I, I just think that that's how he travels. Yeah. When this transparent ball of energy that, that, that swirls and moves. Well, it sort of makes sense. If you look at the black hole theory, it's a transference of energy from one place to another place by bending time. So for him to show you a ball of energy is just another way of saying, look, this is... <laughs> this is how I travel. It's a, an energy transference through something that's scientifically measurable. Yeah, but I, I just think it was interesting with the um, um, just seeing this dog in the forest because that's when he first landed on the on the planet. So that was it was it was sort of good that he'd sort of given me that. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a very interesting. I, I, what I can do is perhaps t I'll type it out. I think I might have typed it out actually and send you this transcript. Yeah, of, and I'll, of, um, I'll stick it up on the demonologist page for people to have a little read. I think they'll, they'll yeah. quite enjoy that. I think they will definitely quite enjoy that. I'm going to ask you a really, really weird question, right? Um, why do you think that these extraterrestrials, these astral travelers, don't want to be seen? Why do they not show themselves to the average person? Why do you think they're, they're communicating through mediumship? I think really it's a case of, of um, trust, isn't it? Um, I do feel that Neil and myself have, have sort of um, worked quite hard to, to gain the trust of, of the spirit world and that we we can be, um, you know, we, we want access to learn more. We want the yeah. spiritual world to show us more. And they do give us more and more each time, you know, they give us something different or something new. And I think it's... Um, I think it's a case of that you know maybe they trust us, and the centre has become a bit of a beacon in the mm. spirit world where we can perhaps help spirit, or you know where we want to learn more. And if if um, you know even the dark and and uh, negative stuff comes through at the spirit uh, through through at the centre, and um, we will work with that as well. So you know we just keep a very open mind yeah. um, of of anything and everything that could possibly come through to us. Yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, no, I definitely agree. Do you think you'll get to a point where these entities or these these energies will trust you enough to be able to show themselves fully to you, or do you think it'll always be a, a mediumship communication with these? I I think so. I think we'll probably get there. It may not be next week or next month or next year, but I, you know, it's it, we're it, we're in it for the long term. Yeah. And you know, Neil and myself are going to start some. Uh, experiments when we get back up to the centre and, and that's one of those is going to take probably a couple of years to complete and we will be logging it all down and maybe even put it all in a book when we've finished yeah. um, but it's um, it's a case of us uh, I go back to spirit and ask them what we can do next and they come back to me and, and um, you know we, we come up with some of these um, wild and wacky experiments oh well, who knows <laughs> you might even get the spirit of Noah himself hey <laughs> Well, let's hope so. Yeah. Let's hope so. I mean, yeah, that'd be good. I mean, this. I'll tell you one of the things in the Book of Enoch that really did make me laugh, and I still remember it now, right. is um, where God sort of says to him, "Look, I've given you beasts, you know, yeah. for you to eat, and I've given you herbs. So stop eating each other." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I basically, I've given you Jamie Oliver's ten-minute meal recipe book. Right, so it's about time you started using it and stop eating each other. <laughs> <laughs> i will say if anybody's going to read the book of enoch i read it with an open mind it's very it's a hard read i think that's it three times before i actually fully understood what i was reading so yeah, it, is, it is it is heavy 
it is, is um, yeah you've got to get your head around it but yeah, it is start, good i always say start with something a bit easier before you ride on team not so start off with um probably harry potter and the prince of azkaban, <laughs> <laughs> of azkaban and sort of work your way up work your way up from there yeah <laughs> But yeah, other, one oh. of the other things that I thought was really interesting is where they kept all the souls called Gaff in the Gaff. <laughs> all the souls that were waiting to go to people's bodies. And I, I, you see, I find this really interesting. All right. the souls that were waiting to go into people's bodies were all held in this place called the Gaff. Yeah. And that's where <laughs> God kept them. So when, when I read that part, I was just like, oh my God, God is Danny Dyer. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> he's from yeah. east london so is, it preordained? is it preordained that we've got good spirits and bad spirits are we are so. we made to be good or bad yeah you know I it's, mean... it's all out there for the uh you know this is what we've got to learn about more isn't it mm. yeah i mean it's funny as well when you say that because when you read the grimoire of the baphomet as well that talks about um souls being held in in a gaff as well and you think hold on a minute these books are written in completely separate countries, like thousands of years apart, but they're, they're mentioning the same thing. And there's no way they could have read the book of Enoch back when I think the book of the Grimoire of the Baphomet was written in 1539. So I mean, they could have done, they could have done, I don't know, but it's, uh, it's the balance in it. When you start reading things over and over again, you sort of go, ah, oh, it's, it's all sort of coming into itself. It's all sort of gelling together. I mean, I'm on, I think my, third or fourth grimoire now and it's like it's... I, I sort of think you know before before we were sort of made you know say like Enki and Enlil when they were on the way to this planet did they have a massive ship and in the hold it was all full of souls ready for this <laughs> earth all in little like them. all in little crystal balls all catalogs <laughs> you know like the memory yeah. play, memory bank in Harry Potter that's the only thing I yeah. can imagine of <laughs> <laughs> but the, the the soul is supposed to go into the human body, into the fetus at about five, six weeks, as soon as the heart starts to beat. So that's that's um, that's quite interesting because even from five, six weeks old. Talk about you see you say that you're talking about reincarnation. Now, if you look at Judaic Christian views, or you talk about you know the the original Catholic views, they don't believe in reincarnation. So. Yeah, <laughs> You know, as, as spiritualist for myself, you know, mm. I do believe that you know you come to you come to Earth in this vessel, you're given this vessel, and yeah. um, you're a spiritual being in a physical body, and you live out this life and you learn your lessons, and yeah. then when you when it's time, you'll leave this vessel behind, and your spirit will go back to the spirit world, and then you'll go on again, and you may then go on to another body, uh, be mm. reborn into another body to learn more lessons and do more things um you know or you could then sort of perhaps become somebody's spiritual spirit guide or you could become somebody's um healer or you know that sort of thing but in order to do all that you have got to learn so much how can you look after sick people if you don't know what it's like to be sick or you don't know you know anything about medicine or stuff like that you know it's all that sort of stuff yeah 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 no i, I, I completely agree with you there jane i mean um well the show got the seal of approval from the boss man <laughs> aka neil pacman packer well, <laughs> thank you very much thank you very much neil i mean it, it's, it's been a really cool conversation tonight it's it's opened my mind a little bit more to the whole thing of you know aliens and astral beings and fae and fairy tales and, and how they all sort of sync together and that it's it's been it's been an eye opener for me i mean i am dreading i'm having a chat with a guy called andy mcgridden uh things about three or four weeks time and he's a ufo like mad man he loves all his ufo stuff so i'm, I'm gonna be well in deep ball on that one so <laughs> but this is sort of it's opened my mind a bit i mean I'm, I'm in that sort of position when it comes to these sort of things where i want to believe but i don't know if i should believe almost well, like, why do you much. have to why do you have to put yourself in that in that restrictive thing why just keep your mind open yeah, no, I mean, I, but yeah. by saying something like, "Well, I shouldn't necessarily believe in that," then why not? Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I should really look at it in that way. I really should look at it in that way. I think I should make my why own you, mind but up. Why you think like that? It's never going to come to you. They're never going to show it to you because no. you're not going to believe it if they do show it to you. And they're never going to waste energy bringing that bringing that to somebody that's not going to believe it. No, I, I mean, I completely agree with that. I'm I'm going to start my own 
my own cult, my own religion called Damoism, <laughs> and we're all going to believe in exactly what we like, you know. <laughs> Oh, I probably need more popcorn for that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're coming up to the end of the show, Jane, and I always do this thing at the end that everyone laughs at, but it's called the big plug. It gives you a chance to let everybody out there that's listening know exactly where to find you, what you're going to be up to in the future. Um, this is where I hand the show over to you and you plug away. So hit them up, Jane. Okay, so um, I work as uh, part of the team in the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Centre in Hinkley, Leicester. And um, you can always get in touch with me via that page. Um, we've got lots of things coming up. We've got uh, Neil and myself do the Haunted Connections podcast on a Monday. Um, we've got the Haunted Connections show on a Tuesday where we have guests and topics and um, there's also the HAPRC live feed. So if you're a bit bored and you want to have a look, um, have a check out the Haunted Antiques um, live feeds page. Uh, there's so much coming up in March. Um, we're looking at having shows on from 7 till 10 p.m. every night through the week um, just to keep you entertained. So yeah. check it out. And the Demonologist UK will be one of them shows coming live from the HAPRC live feeds hub every Friday at nine o'clock. At the moment, I can run over, but soon I won't be allowed to. So I'm making the most of it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, guys, as well, we are on this show raising money for the National Autistic Society. If you do want to donate, please head over there to the facebook.com forward slash Demonologist UK. Anything you can give will be great. We're just there to support and help the people with autism, children with autism get through a very, very hard time at the moment. So, but from me and from Jane, Jane, you've been an excellent guest tonight. Really, really enjoyed the conversation. Um, One quick look forward, yeah, go for it. Noah, demon, angel, alien, or human? Human, in my eyes. <laughs> 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> you told me to believe in whatever so i'm gonna go against the grain <laughs> no I, I i believe noah from what i'm reading I, I i'd probably go with extraterrestrial yeah i'd probably go along your lines of extraterrestrial <laughs> from what i've read from what i've read i mean no one builds a boat in that amount of time not one that size that can handle two of every animal in the whole world so uh, yeah i definitely think he's got some sort of superior knowledge of boat building definitely <laughs> thank you for having me on anyway i really enjoyed it no it's been great jane i mean you really opened my eyes tonight i've really enjoyed it and um yeah i look forward to having you on the show again sometime soon you're welcome <laughs> all right i'm just gonna <laughs> pop you off there i've just got a couple of quick things to do um uh, that was jane rowley on the show blowing minds blowing minds um don't forget guys next week on the show uh let me just check um, why i talk to you guys don't forget we are raising money for the national autistic society um anything you guys can give anything you guys can give would be great it would be absolutely positively fantastic if you can just donate wherever you can 25p 10p 50p just head over to the demonologist on facebook facebook.com and demonologist uk next week we have nick donaldson on the show um he's going to earn his second star coming on the show he has been on here before we're going to be talking about what he's been up to what his plans are for the future and what he wants to do in the paranormal realm once this covid just goes uh massive shouts out to amy saying the daemonites yeah i mean that that sounds quite cool that sounds quite cool <laughs> but yeah really enjoy talking to you guys now i really enjoy talking to jane i hope you really enjoyed the show i'm out of it don't forget keep it spooky